Welcome back to Runiverse. I'm Andrew, and in this video, I'm going to be playing through Mageling, which is a really cool dice activation, tableau building, card and dice game that I got on Kickstarter a while back. It is now back on Kickstarter with an expansion. So let's take a look at Mageling. So in this game, you are in kind of this weird fantasy world, and your goal is to move through these five locations. And randomly during setup, each of those uh, locations has been assigned a monster. So on the, the other side of each of these cards is a monster. There are other versions of each of these location cards. And uh, this is what we have set up today. So we're going to use energy and mana to acquire scrolls that go into our grimoire, which we can activate using these dice, and we can use our energy and mana as well to defeat the opponents we face until we've defeated the last one in the Cloud Chamber. Now, normally in a competitive game, you would be racing. The first player to uh, exit the Cloud Chamber would be the winner. In the solo game, instead I have this an additional row of cards at the top. So you can see the Ever Tree has started with five mana on it. Technically, that mana started here, but as soon as I entered the location, uh, the mana moved onto the tree, and when I enter this location, these two mana will move to the tree, and then this one as well. And then each time I leave a location, I'm going to add one more mana to the tree as well. After each of my turns, during the doom phase, one mana from the tree is going to move onto one of these ancient one cards, uh, the, the one farthest to the left. When it has three, my card's going to be revealed and have a negative effect on me. So... Uh, there's just enough mana basically circulating that each of these four can uh, arrive, potentially. And if I ever need to place a mana, but there's none on the tree, the tree dies and I lose. So I am racing the game in terms of getting to the end through the cloud chamber. So for the rest, let's just get started. So each of my turns is going to start by rolling five dice. And then I'm going to check what results I have. So these are the cards I have to buy from, essentially. We've got six costs, nine costs, seven costs, and two spirits, which hopefully we'll get to cover how those work as well. I've rolled two death and two divination, and then this uh, skill, the hand symbol. So I do get to re-roll once. I don't think any of these is helping me right now. The skill symbol can be used for a few things. One of them is to discard one of these cards, if I don't like what's out, uh, to re-roll dice, or to use an effect that has this arrow symbol, which would include this on my player board, which is only used in the solo version of the game. In competitive, you wouldn't have this ability, but these are cooperative abilities or solo, uh, which would let me heal one of my Grimoire cards, which obviously that's not relevant right now either. But I don't think any of the uses of this are worth it right now, so I don't really want to do that. And matching dice are good. Uh, they let you get more energy. But I don't, but two different pairs is less good. So I guess I want to see if I can just roll any more of the same. So here I did, I got two, one more of that. So I think what I can do is actually nothing. If I Gather with these two dice, I would gain one energy. So basically you can take two mismatched dice to gain one energy, but energy is a temporary currency that it is gone at the end of the turn. So I don't want to do that because I probably won't be able to spend it since all these are kind of expensive. Focusing means you take all the matching dice of one particular rune and put them into your focus row, and then you get that much energy. So I could get three energy here. Uh, that actually this hand symbol can be added to that row. So I, maybe I should have kept that uh, because it can be added in. But who knows what I would have gotten if I had only rerolled two dice. But So this could be made into three energy, and then this could be made into one, and that would be a total of four energy. But everything costs at least six. So that's not, not that's going to help me, 
And actually, I played this before and I had a much better first turn than this. Uh, I was able to buy something that cost eight, I think, on my first turn. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I actually am supposed to start with four mana. So that's my fault. I have four mana right now. So mana is spent the same way as energy. You can spend it to buy grimoires and you can spend it to defeat the enemies and move, but the mana is permanent and energy is temporary. So I have this four permanent money. So actually getting one here and three here is not so bad. Three, four energy plus four mana, I can buy something that costs as much as eight. So I actually had the Sun Staff last game, and it was okay, but it's actually best in combination with other Sun cards. Um, Celestial Radiance, or rather, Sun Sun, it's d Divination, it's a moon symbol. Celestial Radiance is very good, but it costs 9, so I'm out of my price range. So all I can really buy right now is the Bone Rattle. You may mimic the next card that enters the discard pile this turn. Enters the discard pile, wow. Well, i got to start out with something. And I don't think I want that something to be the Sun Staff, so I'm going to actually save a mana by purchasing the Bone Rattle. So I'm going to spend my four energy and two mana to add the Bone Rattle scroll to my Grimoire. And then this card's immediately replaced. And I should have read this as well. The Tempest Raiders are the enemy I need to defeat in the Evertree. Uh, and they have a global ability, which means that it will apply to everybody. Uh, which is I can focus this symbol, which is Ether, to reroll an unused die. Um, and if I defeat him, I can use an animate to gain two mana, which is not bad. So that'll be it for my turn. I spent all my energy. I still have two mana remaining. And I have to move one of these mana from the Ever Tree onto this Ancient One. And that's it. It's my turn again. So I will roll all five dice. So if I focus these, because meaning gain two energy because they match, because of this ability I could reroll an unused die, but I don't even know what I want necessarily yet. So this death die actually will let me activate my bone rattle, which even if the other ability, the mimic ability doesn't come into play, it at least gives me two energy, which is nice. If I focus hedge, which is the green school of magic, I will be able to activate both of these uh, spirits that are in a row. Basically what the spirits do is if you focus their color, you get to use their effect and then they're discarded. So focusing hedge makes sense, especially since the bone rattle would let me copy one of them. Although their effects are not particularly exciting, but I still think I will keep the hedge for that purpose and try to get more of that symbol, which I definitely did not do. Uh, it's <laughs> pretty awkward, um, but I think I'm still going to do that. I'm going to focus Hedge. Uh, well, I'll start by activating the Bone Rattle, gain two energy, and mimic the next card that enters the discard pile. I will focus Hedge, which gives me one energy. So I will just use both of these spirits since I channeled Hedge and put them into my discard pile and use their abilities. So this one says get one mana, and then I can set an unused die to hedge, but I won't bother. And then the Bone Rattles effect lets me mimic the next card that entered the discard pile. That would be this one, so I get another mana. And let's see what comes out. And then we'll use this one to gain another mana, and I would be able to remove a wound from a card in my Grimoire, but again, that's not applicable right now. We have a lot of divination cards here in a row, but does it make sense to start buying them? Actually, especially Zorha, she lets me activate an item and I have an item. So with one divination die, if I had her, I could get two energy and activate the bone rattle to get two more energy. So she is very tempting. And if I ever had the Celestial Radiance, I could activate it, which would then activate her, which could then activate this, which is very good. Right now I have only three energy, but I have five mana, so that's eight. And I can use these two divination dice to gather and gain another mana there, because they match, I get a mana. I'm afraid this one's gonna be wasted. But I think I would like to pick up Zorha now, and then hopefully get this Celestial Radiance later. So I will 
pay three energy and four mana for her. She is an ally. And that will end my turn. So there we go. Do that. Place that. And move another mana here. And roll again. Okay. So I did get a divination symbol, which is great. Because that will let me use Zorha and the Bone Rattle. So I could use the animate action of the skill die to discard a card, which would then let me use Bone Rattle to mimic it. If you want to buy the Celestial Radiance, it'd be a powerful effect. But actually it wouldn't be that good after I've used Zorha because I need this to activate her. But I don't need to do anything yet. So right now I can just re-roll some dice. And having these two matching ones is nice if I want to focus that. So I might just re-roll the hedge. And I've got Ether. If I focus that, I can re-roll an unused die, but I don't think I want to do that. Let's let's just do some stuff here. I'm gonna gain two energy with Zora. And then activate the bone rattle. Normally if you put a die onto a card, that means you've activated it. If you don't have a die on a card, but you have activated it, you have to rotate it to show that. So I'll gain two more energy and mimic the next discarded card. Well, if I focus dream and gain two energy, I have six energy, two mana. Oof. I think I will use this animate power to discard Onira, which is going to give me one mana and place a mana onto Zorha for next time I get her, I will claim that mana. So I'll do that. Place this here and this here. And I have six energy and three mana, and I'm going to spend all of it to purchase Celestial Radiance. And now for just one divination, I'm going to be able to use all three of these. Oops, I should have replaced these cards before. I still have a waste to die, which is unfortunate, but I think I'm doing okay. I'll move another mana, and now I have three here, so I actually have to reveal this ancient one. It is Otar, and he says, discard all spell cards from the Nexus. So that's going to be Psychic Reflection gone. And each player must either wound a spell or gain two summons. So I do have one. Mm. My Celestial Radiance. I do have it. But I could choose to gain two summons instead. I think two summons. So a summon token basically is just a little nuisance. You have to spend two energy to remove it. And you cannot move locations until all your summons are gone. The wound means I can't use that scroll. I can use a divination die, and then at the end of the turn, the wound would come off. Or I can use my, this particular character ability is that I can use the animate power to discard a wound from it. So if I get a hand symbol, I could drop that off and proceed as normal. No big deal. Way better than having to deal with two summons, but I might not draw two summons. Or I might not, I might not roll the, Hand symbol, rather. But I think I'm actually going to do that anyway. It's a little bummer, but I'll get this off eventually. So we'll see. And I've already revealed one Ancient One. I haven't moved yet, so I do need to think about moving. In fact, there's only two mana on the Evertree, so at some point it's going to run out. So I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to pay eight to do so. So let's see what we've got. All right, good, I did get the skill symbol. I'm just gonna do that right away. And two hedge, it's not gonna help me. I do have the moon, so let's just do that first, the divination right off the bat. Celestial Radiance gives me three energy, and I can activate a divination scroll. I'll activate Zorha, which gives me this one mana, gives me two energy, and I can activate an item scroll. Activate Bone Rattle, which gives me two energy. And the next, mimic the next card that goes into the discard pile this turn. Don't know if any cards will be going into the discard pile this turn, but that was a good, very good maneuver for one die. Technically two, since I had to recover, but. So let's see. I still have a reroll. So I'm, this is just kind of planning ahead. Technically, I have to do any rerolls first, but uh, I could just do all that after my reroll. Just want to see what it looks like. 
So I have seven energy and one mana, so I could just move without even using these dice yet, which I might want to do. Uh, but let's take a look at some of these other cards. So I do like the Lunar Blades. Uh, it's relatively cheap and helps me discard summons. Visionary is cool. Must be mimic cards that enter the Nexus, but I have to... Actually, it's a kind of a combo with the Bone Rattle, because if I use this to discard a card, then I would copy the discarded card with the Bone Rattle and copy the new card with the Visionary. So actually, that sounds kind of fun. I like the idea of spinning the wheel every turn and just see what we get. Although that only helps or if I get that hand symbol. This activates any item. So that could be the Lunar Blades or Sun Staff. For example, if I were to get Sixus, he can activate another Death Scroll, which could be the Bone Rattle. And then Zorha could activate the Lunar Blades if I had those cards, for example. I have seven energy right now. I really like the Visionary, though. I like that idea of the Visionary and the Bone Rattle. But they do have to both be activated. And these chaining activations are kind of nice. So Sixus is tempting as long as I then get another item to activate with Zorha. I wonder if I could even buy them both in the same turn. Probably not. It's 7, 8. If these all matched, I could go up to 11. But I would need 12 if I wanted both of these two. Well, let's keep the hedge just because they match and I hope for focusing and reroll this one. And I got death, which isn't going to help me. Unless I do buy Sixus, I could use the death to activate him. I won't be able to activate the death scroll again, but I would be able to get a mana. Yeah, I kind of like that. I think those synergies are better than trying to do the visionary fun shenanigans. So I will spend six of my seven energy to buy sixes. And then I will activate him for one mana. And I will focus hedge for two energy. So it's three energy and two mana. You know what? I'm just going to go crazy. I'm going to buy the visionary now with my five while I have it so I don't waste three energy. I'm getting a pretty big Grimoire. So you can only actually have eight cards in your Grimoire, and I already have five. So at some point I'm gonna have to start moving, but there we go. See what comes out. Reaper, so it's a spirit. If you focus death, you can gain a mana and then discard a card from the Nexus for each die set to death. Interesting. All right, I should have moved one. Okay, so I want the death to activate Sixus. I want a skill, and I'm happy to get this to activate the Visionary. Although I, I do need to move, and if I don't move, if, if I'm if I'm going to use this combo, it's because I'm going to buy something. And if I'm buying something, I'm probably not moving. I really need to move. So I might actually not take this, and I, especially since I really want divination. So I'm going to give myself three chances to roll divination here. I did not get it, which is pretty disappointing. Oh no, I actually just needed the hand to discard something. I really want divination, though. That's worth five energy, if nothing else. And I was wrong. I didn't need to buy. I just needed to use this to discard. I'm making all kinds of mistakes. Can I at least get to eight energy? to move. So I can at least do that. I can use one of these to get one three. I can use these to get up to six and then have an extra death wasted. I'm going to do something weird. I don't like it, but I'm going to put this here to reroll and I'm going to reroll these three dice. All right. So I'm pretty sure I can only activate one. So this one's not going to be helpful unless I focus with it, which I will, but I'm going to use the Divination, which I'm pleased to have gotten, to gain three. So three, activate Zorha, gain two. And she can activate an item. I will activate the Bone Rattle to gain two. I will actually use this Death and this skill to focus Death, gain two energy. And I get to use the Reaper Spirit, which gives me one mana. And... I can discard a card from the Nexus for each die set to death, which is one. And maybe get rid of a card that I don't think I'm going to want to buy, which is probably going to be this Ethereal Mist. And 
I guess I get to see what's replaced first. I will also use Bone Rattle to mimic the card, the Reaper that entered the discard pile. So I get another mana and discard another card, which I guess I'm not doing any ether stuff, so I'll get to discard that one as well. All right. Oh, Voidling activates a Death Scroll, so I could just chain Sixes Voidling Bone Rattle. Still want my Lunar Blades item though to end my Lunar Divination Chain. I'm left with 9 energy, 2 mana, and 1 ether die that I don't have any use for. Doing a lot of wasting of dice this game. I did not do that in my previous game. But I definitely want to move. So I will spend 8 energy, go down to 1, to head to the Grimthorn Forest. And I don't have any more hand icon to be able to do the gain two mana of the Tempest Raiders. So that one's going to be gone. And Thorn says enter, gain a summon. So that's going to slow me down. And defeat, you may discard an unactivated scroll on your Grimoire to gain any scroll from the Nexus. Okay. That's worth considering. Even buy a cheap one, defeat him, and then get a more expensive one. Could net me like four energy, for example. I could even give up this visionary if I don't want to try to live the dream anymore. I think I'm done with this turn. Go down to zero energy. I could spend my last energy and one of my mana just to drop the summon right away, but I don't think I will. So I'm going to move another energy from Evertree to an Ancient One and roll my dice. All right. A lot of hedge with not a lot of stuff. So I'm going to actually try to do my plan this time, but I'm not going to keep any of these dice. Wow. Okay. Ugh. The game really doesn't want me to do my stuff. Really need divination. And death. Yeah, I can't do my combo if I don't have death. And I can't gain a ton of energy if I don't have divination. I could focus for four. It's not very good. I mean, this would let me activate visionary to get one mana. So I'd have four energy and three mana. And maybe I buy something. Like I could buy the Lunar Blades just to set up for next turn. And then whatever comes out next, the visionary would copy it. It's not great. But I'm going to do it. So four energy, activate the visionary, gain one mana, and then I'm going to spend four of my energy and two of my mana to buy these Lunar Blades, or rearrange a little bit. See what comes out. Cosmic Chalice gives me two energy, and if three or more dice are set to the same symbol, gain one more energy. Well, that's not the case, but I will gain two energy, and then I'll spend that to drop this summon. So that was okay, okay recovery. And my turn, move on onto this ancient one and see what it's gonna do. Discard all ally cards from the Nexus, which is Aaliyah. And then each player must either wound an ally or gain two summons. Well. Two summons, huh? I did just pick up Lunar Blades that help me drop the summons. So I think this time I'm actually going to take the summons. And let's hope for some divination and death this time. Dream would be great too. All right, well, that's the dream. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's the dream. Divination, death, and dream right off the bat. Got one skill token. Skill symbol, and I don't know if I need either of them. I could use it to discard a card, copy it with visionary, or copy it with bone rattle, and copy the new thing with visionary. But if I just buy something, I'm gonna have a lot of energy. I'm gonna have three, five, seven, nine energy, plus two more mana. I'd love to buy Voidling. I have a big death chain. I'm gonna have nine. I can discard an unactivated item, get a more expensive one. So 
So I could buy the cosmic chalice, beat Thorn, and convert it into an uncorporeal claw. And that would kind of replace the bone rattle at the end of my death chain. And I would still want to buy the voidling sooner rather than later. But in neither case am I using these. I think I'm actually going to roll one of them. Keep the other one. And that way they can match. Uh, I can focus with them. All right. So let's use the visionary. Gain a mana. Let's use Sixus. Gain a mana. And activate Bone Rattle to gain two energy. Use Celestial Radiance. Gain three energy. Activate Zorha. Gain two energy. Activate the Lunar Blades. Gain two energy. And get rid of a summon. We have nine energy. Three mana. Go ahead and focus these now, I think. Get two more energy. So I have 11. Uh, let's see. 11 plus 3 is 14. That's just enough to buy Cosmic Chalice for 5. Yeah, I'm not going to copy something that's discarded because something's being discarded. But that's okay. Okay, so buy that for 5. But I will copy what comes out with Visionary, which is Remote Healing. Ugh, that's the cheapest thing. So I get a mana. Ah, okay. Go down to six. Actually, a little bit disappointing. I was really hoping for more. Yeah, I guess I actually should have not focused. I could have done this and gotten two from that. And then this one could have been re-rolled or used to discard. I'm going to retcon that, actually. I'm going to go down to energy. Because all that, this was on the table, I knew that. So I'm going to do this, gain this two energy here, and use this to discard something. Which I don't, I don't think I'm ever going to get this Sun Staff. So I'll discard it. I have no unused dice to set to Divination, but I will gain energy for each die that is, which is two. So I'll go up from six to eight. And that's from the effect of the Bone Rattle. And now, and now, I have eight. I can spend two of it to get rid of the summon. And six energy and three mana to defeat Thorn. And this defeat ability is discarding oh, an unactivated scroll. I've activated all of my scrolls. I guess I will live with that, unfortunately. I do not get to use his ability. But at least I'm moving on. All right, face the Abomination in the Rune City. Enter, choose a player to gain one summon. And if I focus Divination, I can defeat this location for two less, and it's normally 13, means so I could get it down to 11. All right, so we'll move one mana there, and roll my dice. All right, I do have one summon in front of me. And I would like to keep this divination. I would like to roll a death. Suppose I'll keep the dream. So I'll re-roll these other three. There is a death. It's nice. And then two mismatched dice is okay. All right. So I'll use Celestial Radiance to gain three. Activate Zorha. Gain two and activate the Lunar Blades to gain two and defeat the Summon. I will use the Death to activate Sixus to gain mana and activate the Bone Rattle for two energy. And the next discarded card will be Mimicked. I could use the Visionary. So I have nine. I didn't focus anything. And I might not. Certainly not focusing Divination this turn. I still want to buy the Voidling, so I will go ahead and activate the Visionary, gain one mana, and mimic the next card that enters. And then I'll spend seven of my nine to go to two energy and pick up the Voidling to add to my death chain for the future. And copy this Orange Wisp, <laughs> which gives me one mana, and I can set an unused die to Aether. 
which I will actually do. And now I can focus ether, which will give me two energy. And use the Orange Wisp Spirit to gain another mana, which means it went to the discard pile. So Bone Rattle will copy it and give me another mana and see what comes out. And I have four energy and six mana. My Grimoire is full, but I have not excited about this Cosmic Chalice. So I'd be especially interested in something that lets me chain some more, but I don't think that is currently out. I wouldn't mind, like I said, finding this Incorporeal Claw. Four plus six is 10. I don't have to spend almost all my mana to get the claw. Cheap one would be Remote Healing. Get a mana and remove a wound. Not really good. Deep Dream lets me recover an eye that's been placed on another Dream Scroll. That's not really good unless I then have another dream, third Dream Scroll to activate after that. So I kind of don't want any of these except for maybe this claw, which would cost me all my mana almost. So I'm going to spend my four energy and five mana to get the claw. I can't discard. My only options of what to replace are the unactivated ones. So I will replace this Cosmic Chalice with the Claw. And now when I do my Death Chain, I'll have to decide whether I want to do the Bone Rattle or the Claw. But the Claw is probably going to be best almost all the time now. So my Bone Rattle is kind of outdated at this point. Which means with a full Grimoire, I really should focus on moving. But let's see. Oh, so I did forget actually, whenever you leave a location, you add a one more mana. So I left this one and this one already, so I should have that retreat at three right now. And now we're gonna move this one. And you can see there's just enough mana left between these two little piles to fill up all four of those spots. So do that, advance, and take the next turn. No divination. We do have death. We do have skill, but the skill is less exciting now. But I'm not going to be using Bone Rattle necessarily. So let's me use Visionary. So I'm going to keep it. Um, but I really need, well, I really need the divination. If I don't get divination, I don't have anything. I have a little bit. The death, my death chain is pretty nice at this point. Should I just reroll everything and try to get divination? Maybe. I think it's that important. So I'm only gonna keep the death. And here we get the divination and a dream and a couple hedge to focus. So that's not bad. All right. So activate Celestial Radiance, gain three energy, activate a divination scroll, which will be Zorha, gain two energy, activate an item scroll, which will be Lunar Blades. Actually, I could activate the Bone Rattle. because It is an item. Back to, back to our beginning combo. So now that we're going to use Death on the Incorporeal Claw, use Zorha on Bone Rattle. Because I don't have any summons to get rid of. So I will use the Bone Rattle. Gain two energy from the Bone Rattle. Use Death on Voidling. Gain two energy. Activate a Death Scroll, which is sixes. Gain one mana. Activate a Death Scroll, which will be the Claw, gain three energy, and gain one mana for each other activated Death Scroll, which is three. So I get three more mana. That's pretty good. Yeah, okay. I like it. Go ahead and use the Visionary, because I can. Gain a mana and next card that enters the Nexus. And now I have 12 energy. So I don't want to buy anything because I don't really want to place, replace my Celestial Blades. So I'm not even going to look at the row. I would like to replace a card to be able to copy a couple of things, but I can live with it. If one of these were a skill, I'd be very happy, but I'll settle for my two. And I could focus it for two energy, or I can gather one mana. But since I need to spend 13... Kind of the same thing. So if I, if 
focus it, I'm going to go up to 14 energy and go down to 1. Otherwise, I'm just going to gain a mana, but then I'm going to have to spend it. So I'll just gain the energy, go to 14 energy, spend 13 of it, go down to 1, and beat the Abomination. And go to the Sky Tower of Eruim, where I face an Ominous Blob. And since I left a location, I do get to add another mana to the tree. And local focus scrolls cost one less. Okay, so if I focus a particular school of man magic and then purchase a rune of that same school that turn, it would cost one less. I don't think that's going to apply. And then if I defeat this, I'm going to choose a player to gain a mana for each die on my spirit crystal. And my spirit crystal is... I think it's this, I think it's my tableau. So, uh, a mana for each die on it. So right now that'd be two. So, I'll end my turn, waste my last energy, and place the third one on this ancient one, see what we get. And it is Ixthir, discard all item cards from the Nexus. So there we go. And, each player must either wound an item or gain two summons. I think I might be a little bit more equipped to get rid of summons than I am to get rid of a wound. So I'm actually going to take the two summons again. And here we go. All right. Ooh. Okay, but there's no death here. Definitely need death. So I'm gonna roll three dice and get no death. Ooh, okay, bummer. Need 17 to beat the blob. Energy's not gonna do me a lot of good if all I can do is buy cards with it. Don't really wanna replace any of these. None of these lets me change a die. Jaren does. I like him. I had him last game. Very useful. I mean, I could even potentially buy him and then use him this turn, but he doesn't actually function as part of a chain. But if I were to, for example, get seven energy with my divination chain and then buy him, spending one mana, I could then use this to get two energy, set something to death, and activate my death chain. But I have to replace something. So what am I gonna replace? Is it the visionary? Am I done with her? Or is it the bone rattle? I think it might be the bone rattle. I think I might do that. All right. I mean, or what, how much of my energy am I getting? Am I getting close to 17? Three, five, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Still too short. So. Yeah, activate Celestial Radiance, gain three energy, Zorha, two more, Lunar Blades, two more, uh, get rid of a summon. Oh yeah, even if I had 17 energy, I still have to get rid of both summons anyway, so. I have seven, I will spend all seven plus a mana to buy Joran, discarding the Bone Rattle. Put him over here. Activate him, gain two energy, change a die to death, activate death, two energy, activate death, one mana, activate death, three energy, and get two more mana. This card should be replaced. I actually should have activated her first since a new card was about to enter. And we get the Doom Weaver, which gives us two energy and mana for each card that enters the discard pile this turn. So I guess that would be starting now, which I think is gonna be none. I will focus this dream just for one energy. So I have 10, I'll go to eight to knock off a summon. Everything's been activated. Eight, I'd have to spend nine mana. Three, six, and I have it. Um, yeah, I'm going to do it. Why be stingy? Spend all nine mana, 
plus eight energy for 17 and clear the blob and go to the cloud chamber. Put this last one on the ever tree and we're facing chakra reveal. Each player must discard three mana or else gain two wounds. Wow. Okay. I actually don't remember the rules about gaining wounds. It has to be placed on unactivated scrolls. Okay, so the rule is I'm actually going to keep these here until the end of my turn, and then once I refresh everything, I have to assign them. So He also says local, you can use an animate to gain a mana for each focused card in the nexus. Okay, so if I focus a particular school, I can then check the nexus and get that much mana. So that's pretty good. If, you fo if I focus dream, I get three mana for that. It's very powerful. So I get to refresh everything and now I have to assign two wounds, which is not good because I can clear one, but not two. I think the visionary is not integral to my plans and neither is Joran, unfortunately, because these are my kind of my chains that I'd like to keep going with. All right, uh, this will be placed here. And whoa. I have no mana. Well, this is definitely a dream focus roll, but I need death. I would love to keep all these dreams, though. I do want to focus dream, but I'm going to re-roll everything. Well, yeah. if I can animate, I can remove the wound, and then I can get whatever I want. But for that, then I need two divinations. So, got to re-roll everything. I got the skill, but no death. No death and no second divination. All right, well, I will do this to use my regeneration animate to remove the wound from Joran. I will then use Joran to gain two energy and set a die to divination. Activate Celestial Radiance for three. Activate Zora for two. Activate the Lunar Blades for two. I don't know if it's gonna help me actually. I'm not getting up to 18 here. You know what? Yeah, I should actually, I should make this death. This should be death. So I'm gonna have two from Joran, two from the Voidling, and then I get a mana. Because I'm not gonna beat him this turn, so I may as well, then my death chain generates mana, so. I'll do that, and then three more energy, and two more mana. Yeah, it's at least a little bit more mana. Now I can focus Dream for one energy and the local ability of Chakra. Oh no, I have to activate that. Oh man. That could have changed my decisions earlier, but here we are. So yeah, there's nothing I can do. Oh, the best I could do is just get this three mana. No, I will focus this instead. And use this to heal the visionary. So there we go. That's better. Not by a lot, but by a little. So we clear our wounds at least. Place a second. And now at the end of this turn, this last man is going to be placed here. We're going to reveal it. And at the end of the turn after that, I lose the game. So I have to win this turn or next turn. And my eight energy goes to waste. I don't think there's anything I wanted to do with that anyway. Pretty happy with my setup. <sighs> no death, divination, and things we don't really care about. So there's death. All right, that's good. Oh, and we got two divination. That's nice too. So I can use this here for three, five, seven. I can use this for five more, plus one, two, three mana. And then I can do whatever I want with these. I could use Jorn for two energies that make something into Dream and activate the Visionary. But I have 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, and 18. So that's actually enough to defeat Chakra. I don't need to do anything else. So let me check the rules because technically when you play co-op, it is part of a campaign and you can play 
five chapters with increasing difficulty, essentially. And although you do get to a little bit of an upgrade over the course of the campaign, uh, but you score a point if you won the chapter in your first try, a point for each life force remaining on the ever tree during the final turn of the chapter. So it'll only be one. Um, and minus one if you're playing Apprentice, plus one if you're playing Legendary. So those are just difficulty modifications. So I'm not going to score anything for buying any more things or getting more. So I will spend my 12 energy and 6 mana to defeat Chakra and win the game. Well, let me know what you thought in the comments. The art is beautiful. The solo mode's pretty satisfying. I love building up this uh, tableau, the Grimoire of Scrolls. My combos were very different than they were last game. There's a ton of cards in this deck. So take a look. Mageling from Familiar Games. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.